Hi, welcome to the second installment of the Tool Chest project. I've gotten through all of my design constraints and figured out what I want this thing to look like. And I've overcome some challenges in milling my lumber. And as much as I would love to dive in and start cutting joinery right off the bat, I still have to take into account a couple of unique aspects to this project, mainly that the sides of this case are stepped, they're not just square. So unlike a normal case project where I could just square up and rip my lumber to width, I have a few extra steps I have to take for this project before I can get into the dovetails. Well, I have my stock all milled up. This is, uh, this is the bottom actually, this is probably the piece that I liked the least. But um, I've got them all dimensioned uh, and basically cut to width already. They're all 12 inches wide. The top of the case is actually going to be less than 12 inches wide, but I'm keeping everything at 12 inches for now. And then once I uh, actually cut the steps out of the side pieces, then I'll actually measure the top um, referentially instead of just measuring it ahead of time. Just in case I, I'm off any degree, I can make up for that by cutting that piece at the end. But now it's critical that I get all four of these pieces to the exact same length to ensure that I have a nice square box. And because I want them all to be the same length, I'm going to use my miter gauge on the table saw to do this operation. This turns out to be a fairly easy setup because I happen to have a straight edge that's exactly 24 inches. So I'm just laying that, so it's just touching the point of the blade and then sliding up my stop to the end of it, tightening the screw and I am good to go. My first cut is just to square off the board, so I'm gonna lift up my depth stop. And I've put a little mark here. I just put my ruler in the center of that board and just marked the ends, so I know I'm taking about the same amount off each end. That way, if there's any snipe, then I'm, I'm making sure to remove that snipe. That's why I leave these boards long as I'm milling them up. And then my second cut, obviously, I put the depth stop back down, remove my cutoff, and repeat. Next, I need to lay out the front steps where each board is gonna be stepped back at each, each level of the drawers. If you remember back to the last episode, I explained that each step back is going to be exactly the same width as the stock itself, 5 eighths of an inch. So I've cut three pieces of 5 eighths inch stock that will assist me in this process. Now I went over to my SketchUp diagram and I looked at the distance that that first step happens from the bottom. And so I just lay out my combo square and make a mark at that point. So I know where that, that's where my first step is gonna be. And I can just square that off. Then I can use my first stick and use that to scribe the line where this is going to step in. Then I just reset my combo square to that, that next height where I know this is going to step up again and simply lay this on my mark and put my next line there. Square it off. And this time I'm just stacking two of these pieces together, flushing it up with the edge of the board, and then the same thing, I just run a line up. Reset my combo square one last time, and repeat that process again. Get 
Give me my last mark. And then stack three of these up. Oops, forgot to square off my mark. Make sure it's flush with the front again. And then draw my last line. So I make sure that the bottoms of these the left and the right board are perfectly flush and then I'll just transfer you through each of those lines over. And then of course I'll just repeat the same trick using that the three pieces of 5 8 inch stock to set these back. And then I'm ready to cut the uh, steps. In order to start cutting out each of these steps I needed to decide on the best method for doing that. Um, there are a couple of different ways I could do it. I could certainly use the bandsaw to cut in each step and then cut down, and that would give me a nice kind of crisp corner, but it would involve a lot of cleanup just because the bandsaw blade doesn't leave a great finished surface. I could use hand tools as well. Um, I could easily cut the steps going in this direction across the grain, with my dovetail saw without too much trouble. Again, it would require a bit of cleanup, but I don't have a saw that's deep enough to cut these taller pieces that would go with the grain. So what I've decided to do is cut as much of this as I can using my table saw because it's gonna give me the cleanest, uh, you know, closest to a finished cut, and then it'll involve as little cleanup with chisels and sandpaper uh, to kind of get those corners nice and, and sharp. So I'll show you how I go about doing this on the table saw. The first cut I'm gonna make is this step in. So it'll be, this'll be the, the deepest step in will come here and then slightly shallower and then the shallowest one down here at the bottom. And all I have to do to set that up on the table saw is line the blade up right against my markings and I can see that it's just kissing the very top of that mark. And then all I have to do is run it with my miter gauge across the blade like this. And I'll get a nice clean cut that I can register that, you know, I won't have to do a ton of cleanup there. The problem I have is that my, my miter gauge is only about an inch and a half to two inches tall. That's not a lot of support for a wide piece like this. So I have sort of a, an auxiliary fence that will help me with this operation. One of the really nice advantages to using an aftermarket miter gauge um, is that this particular one, this is the Incra um, 1000 SE, and this happens to have a T-track right in the, in the face surface. So all I did is take a piece of three quarter inch um, birch ply and run a couple of bolts through there um, with square nuts on the backside. And then that'll just slide right into my T-track. And I cut it to length so that it gets to the end of the table, and then runs up against the miter slot on my table saw. The other little trick I'm using here is that I'm actually stacking both the left and the right board together here, making sure that the, the very tops here are perfectly flush. That way, if there's any variation or I miss the line on, on one of the pieces, it's really not gonna matter, because the most important thing is that both of these steps match up perfectly. So I just line up, and I've used a marking gauge mark here so that I can get very precise and accurate. So I line that up so that the inside of the blade is just touching the bottom of that mark, because this is my waist side on this side. And then I'm just gonna take a clamp and not only clamp the left and right side together, but I'm also clamping the entire assembly to that auxiliary fence on the miter gauge. And that'll make sure that everything's held very securely. Nothing's gonna move and it'll be a nice, safe operation. Mm -hmm. 
And there I've got a nice clean cut in both boards and because I use that, that backer board, I get no blowout on the back side either. So a successful operation there. Then for my next cut, I just lower the blade until it just barely kisses my next line. I've put a piece of blue tape along the whole length of my fence and I really just need it here because I'm going to mark on the tape but the reason I put it across the whole fence is so that I keep a nice consistent parallel surface. And then all I did is slide this up so it's right next to the blade and look for that point where the tip of the blade just starts to disappear below the surface of the insert. And then I have a little mark there that tells me exactly where that is. And then I'll just extend that line up using my square. And that is how I'm going to know exactly where to stop my cut. Just like any standard rip cut, I just line up the fence so that my blade just touches that line. And the only difference is that when I start feeding this, as soon as this line, this cross cut, gets to the mark I made there, I know I need to stop because the bottom of the blade is just getting to that cross cut. And then I'll just have to clean up the rest of that using some hand tools. But this will get me most of the way. So you can see on the bottom, I got all the way across. Now here's where I'm going to do a little bit of a trick and you'll see why. Um, obviously I've connected my two lines on one side, but because the blade is round, I still have about an inch, maybe even an inch and a half to go on the other side. So what I'm going to do is move my fence out, register the blade back in that kerf and make sure it's on that exact same line and then I'll be able to continue it through and get most of that cut done. The other thing I'll have to do now is just extend my line all the way across so that I know where to stop on the line on that fence. By making that second cut, I can actually just snap this piece right off you see, it'll just leave this little triangle behind that I'll need to clean up. But this is going to take a lot less work to get finish ready than it would have if I'd used the bandsaw. So then, once I've removed that piece, this is just a, a simple process of then moving the fence again and then cutting each of my second tiers. And then I'm left with the relatively easy process of just cleaning up these little triangles because you know I have a pretty nice finish here that'll just need a little bit of sanding. And then I can come through and just take out these triangles pretty easily. Unfortunately, these steps are just a little bit too long for me to use my standard paring chisel. Otherwise, I could just register the flat surface of the paring chisel right along this surface and get a really, really easy and accurate way of cleaning these up, but 
I'm just using my gooseneck chisel, which still gives me pretty good control because I do have the, the edges here and here to register that chisel against. So it makes this process still fairly easy and straightforward and I have a nice clean inside corner. Here you can see the finished matching pairs of the sides with the stepped fronts nicely finished. I got the corners good and crisp. I'm pretty happy with the results and I'm really happy with how it came out. I think the table saw was the right approach to take because it really did minimize the amount of cleanup I had to do. So at this point, these are ready for me to start cutting the dovetails.